I've been waiting all day for this. You play the game to have an opportunity to be the best. Go be the best. Be the best today. It was 55 degrees this afternoon in Denver, but right now, a little after 6 o'clock, it is 34 degrees. And 75,000 people at Invesco Field at Mile High roar their approval as their Denver Broncos have just come out onto the field, ready to face LaDainian Tomlinson and the San Diego Chargers on NBC's Sunday Night Football. Al Michaels with John Madden and Andrea Kramer. Welcome to Denver. This has the makings of a great game. San Diego last week down by 21 at the half scored 42 second half points a spectacular come from behind win over the Cincinnati Bengals. They come in with a mark of seven and two. Their quarterback is Philip Rivers in his first year as their starter. He's played nine games in a word. He has been outstanding and they have LaDainian Tomlinson regarded by many as the best running back in the league. San Diego leads the league in scoring. As far as Denver is concerned all you need to know is that in seven games this season in each of those seven games Denver has scored less than 20 points their record in those games six and one and that tells you one thing defensively they have been great so John what makes that Denver defense tick and what do they do tonight against this potent San Diego offense well you know you just watch the Denver defense and you realize one thing they really play well as a team. And then Marty Schottenheimer was saying last night, and I think he's right, he said, this is the best tackling defense that he's ever seen. They have good speed, and they match up well against the Chargers. Now, what they've done here is, is they've always played them with an eight-man front. They use John Lynch like the extra linebacker, and they say, LaDainian Tomlinson is not going to beat us with a run. That has worked in the past. I'm not sure it'll work tonight. Now the Chargers began the season they played Marty Ball. They were conservative and it cost them a, a game at Baltimore that they felt they should have won. All of a sudden now over the last five or six weeks Marty Ball has become Air Coriel. How did that happen. Well it's a lot more fun isn't it. I think yeah, it was a yeah. result of that Baltimore thing they realized we can't play like this and that we can't keep the wraps on Philip Rivers and if, if we're going to be an offensive team he has to be a pro quarterback. He went out against the Steelers. He was a pro quarterback and ever since then he's been the guy. So now you can't go in there like you know like the Broncos are going to try and do tonight and say we are going to stop Tomlinson because now you have to feel that Philip Rivers can beat you. Chargers Broncos two original AFL teams they've been teeing it up since 1960. This is uh, the kind of games that uh, you play football for. We're on a huge stage tonight and uh, our team knows it. As a kid these are the type of games you dream of playing in. Every chance you get man to get a leg up on, on the competition you have to do it you got to seize the moment. NBC Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Chevrolet, America's brand. Chevy, an American revolution. By Canon, wherever there's a great image, there's Canon Image Anywhere. By the U.S. Army, there's strong and then there's Army Strong. Find out more at GoArmy.com slash strong. And by Dockers San Francisco, work, weekend, dress, golf. Spanish audio provided by Telemundo. Well, I 
Let's check in with Andrea Kramer. Good evening, Al. Well, Denver's fourth-ranked rushing attack has struggled the past two games, so the question tonight becomes, for whom the bell tolls? Well, it will not be for Tatum Bell. He's been nursing two turf toe injuries, and he did practice this week. Mike Shanahan actually upgraded him to probable, but Shanahan told me in his gut he feels like it's better for him to rest and get him ready to play again in four days. So Mike Bell gets the start, and Damian Nash will see some action as well. All right, Andrea, Mike Bell, an undrafted rookie from the University of Arizona. Nash had been elevated last week from the practice squad. San Diego will get it. Paul Ernster, who also serves as the Denver punter, will kick off 13 touchbacks, second in the league, and that's not unusual for a guy who plays half of his games at 5,280 feet. Michael Turner who is the backup to Tomlinson and a great running back in his own right will return the kick and here we go for first place in the AFC West two yards deep Turner comes out of the end zone and he brings it back out to the 22 yard line and as we take a look at the San Diego starting offense Philip Rivers NC State LaDainian Tomlinson TCU Lorenzo Neal Fresno State Keenan McCarty UNLV Eric Parker Joliet Township High School. Antonio Gates, Detroit Central High School. Marcus McNeil, Auburn. Chris Dillman, Indiana. Nick Hardwick, Purdue. Mike Goff, Iowa. Shane Olivier, The Ohio State University. Each team seven and two, but the Chargers have found it very rough playing in Denver through the years. They have not won a game in this stadium, which is five years old. This is their sixth game here. And here's Tomlinson, and he's had a tough time in particular here in Denver. He gains five. Here's the Denver D. Kennard Lane, the U. Michael Myers, Alabama. Gerard Warren, Florida. Ebenezer Ekubon, Carolina. DJ William, the U. Al Wilson, Tennessee. Ian Gold, Michigan. Champ Bailey, Georgia. John Lynch, Stanford. Nick Ferguson, Georgia Tech. Darren Williams, Oklahoma State. That's a defense as you look at John Lynch now in his 14th season, 11 at Tampa, three here. They have given up eight touchdowns in nine games, and four of them came in one game against the Colts. Now Tomlinson, and Tomlinson close to a first down, but a little bit short. Tomlinson has played five games in this stadium. This is his sixth year in the league, so he never played at the old mile high. And Denver has had his number because here at Invesco Field, he has averaged only 52 yards per game and just 3.4 per carry. His average per carry this season coming in 4.9. Third and one from the 31. And this time it's the up back, and that's the full back, Lorenzo Neal. So three runs, John, and a first down. Right, and we see John Lynch up there like we were talking about. And what that does is that brings the safety down, gives you an eight-man front, and in essence gives you a fourth linebacker. That time the Chargers just ran right at John Lynch. You're going to see him. He's going to be coming up here, and he's going to take this gap right here. So you have the three linebackers. Then you have John Lynch. He's taking on that gap, and boom, they just ran right at him. San Diego proficient on third and one this season. 13 out of 14 times they've converted. Neal is the fullback. He's as good as they come out of that spot. He leads the way for Tomlinson, and Tomlinson cuts inside of him. And Ladanian with a flag coming in at the end of the play takes it to the 39. Bill Carollo is the referee. Nick Ferguson made the tackle. Don't you feel that LT maybe heard those stats you were talking about oh. a little too much this week? He's heard about it and read about it. I saw him when he came into the hotel last night. He just looked like a fired up guy. Face mask, 25. Defense, five yard penalty from the end of the run. Replay first down. Penalty is on Ferguson. Tomlinson with a chance to break Sean Alexander's less than one year old NFL record for touchdowns. Ooh, just Ooh. grazed it. I don't think, unless he got, no, he didn't get it at all. No. No, that was a uh, phantom face mask. Now you have. Tomlinson split out. He's their leading receiver. He's in the slot. 
and Michael Turner operates out of the backfield and that presents a new set of problems for the defense and here is Turner as good a backup running back as there is in the league up to the 46 yard line so we know about Tomlinson we've talked about Turner and will throughout the game and then there is this guy Philip Rivers remember draft day 2004 Eli Manning saying I'm not going to San Diego they pick him anyway Rivers gets picked by the Giants you have a trade Rivers goes to San Diego he's on the bench for two years back of the suddenly sharp and emerging Drew Brees and then Brees leaves Rivers inherits the job and through nine games this season he has just been great first and uh, ten from the 46 yard line they give it to Turner and he's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. D.J. Williams is there for the stop. Yeah, and that's another reason that the that the Broncos feel that they they really do so well against this Charger team is that they have speed at the linebackers. And here you see here you see D.J. Williams. He's coming on a blitz. Al Wilson right behind him. That that they haven't pressured a lot this year, but I think they're going to pressure the Chargers more tonight. And in talking to the Chargers, they expect more pressure defenses tonight. You see, Wilson Schottenheimer said last night he never makes a wrong first step. Second and 11. Inside handoff. Tomlinson, and he goes nowhere. And that's John Lynch coming up to spill him at the 47 yard line. And that will set up a third down and eight. Mike Shanahan going over his defensive card. Marty Schottenheimer now in his fifth year at San Diego. You know Larry Coyer the defensive coordinator of the Broncos just says we're going to take away the run we're going to have gap control we're going to have all the gaps LT is not going to run us and you kind of get the feeling that, that maybe the Chargers come out here and say they say we can't run. we're going to show them we can run we just had a shot of barrel man seven runs no passes now out of the shotgun on third and nine here they come all that blitz Ferguson gets to Rivers and forces him to throw it away and there's a flag on the other side of the field back at the 43 yard line. I think that's against the uh, it's offside Denver. Yeah I think it's against Denver. I think it's 92 Elvis Doomerville. Thank you. Move. Offside defense 52 five yard penalty replay third down. Well it ended in a two anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Ian Gold who was inactive last week. And he's a guy and you're going to see him right in here and he he comes into the gap he was going to he was going to blitz in that gap and he he just tried to time it up and he got there a little early didn't he. Denver the least penalized team in the league but two on this first drive already the face mask on Ferguson which was kind of a bogus call and this one one of the few defensive fouls that does not result in an automatic first down so it's third down and four four wide receivers and Tomlinson flanking Rivers Rivers first pass of the game is complete caught by the sure handed Keenan McCardell but there is another flag on the play here doesn't Philip Rivers look comfortable though you know, you know here's a quarterback and especially in the shotgun I mean he just gets that ball it's right up there and right out and and those are the things that that he's been working on since since he was in high school and his dad was his coach. You know, keeping that ball up not dropping it and, and getting that quick release defense. right defensive tackle that penalty is declined result of the play first down. Just watch what he, what he what he wants to do is catch that ball put it up by his shoulder and then just bring it out right from there. He kind of pushes it out but there's not a lot of once once that ball is going there's not a lot or there's not any wasted motion. So Keenan McCardell's catch will count. They decline the penalty. 855 for Keenan in his career. Ninth all time. And then Tomlinson gets buried by John Engelberger the one time 49er knocking him to the ground after a short game. Yeah, we're talking to Philip Rivers. I remember the last time about how low he has to get. You watch the center, Nick Hardwick, and, and he gets down low. See here, so Philip Rivers is six five, so he has to he has to squat down at that angle to get the ball. He said he's never had a center as low as Hardwick is, and he's had to make that adjustment. And watch him here; he stands up, and then he, he's up here. Then he'll make the adjustment. He'll go down to the squat. 
You see right there. Yeah. See how low he has to get. He even gets down low in the huddle. The pass is thrown to the left side, and that's Mono Malayuna, the tight end, who scored a touchdown against Cincinnati last week to the 40. You know, it's funny talking about how low he gets. Some of the Chargers were saying Drew Brees was 6-1, but he stood up tall in the huddle, so they'd have to, you know, look straight at him. He said, we looked down at Rivers, who's 6-5. I remember I remember Rivers was telling us when he came in the huddle one time he was all fired up and he started saying we got to do this we got to do this and he said he looked at the linemen and they didn't say anything he said golly do you guys hear me <laughs> he said yeah but that's the way offensive linemen are well, that was in the Pittsburgh game he said let's close it they say we can't close it let's close it and they did that night pressure on and that forces the pass to be thrown up like a balloon and it's incomplete Ian Gold came in and gave Rivers a shot and then all of the Chargers in the neighborhood all had to think about becoming defenders. That time they had nine guys in the box, did the Denver Broncos. Yeah, and Ian Gold is a pass rusher from this outside here, and he is going to come right here completely free. They had the nine men up. They weren't sure which were going to come. The, the, the corner drops back. They go, no one blocks Ian Gold, and he is right on Phillip Rivers. And Phillip Rivers was lucky that ball wasn't intercepted. Yeah, Vincent Jackson had to become a defensive back. Now a floating kick by Cyphers is fair caught at the eight-yard line by David Kirkus. So San Diego runs 11 plays, but still they have to punt. Plummer and Denver with the ball for the first time when we come back. Denver? Far from that site, maybe a mile and a half in Vesco Field at Mile High, next to what used to be the old Mile High Stadium. From the nine yard line, two tight ends set for the Broncos as they start on the first down here. And the ball is tossed back to the rookie Mike Bell for a gain of six. Here is the Bronco offense Jake Plummer, Arizona State. Michael Bell. Tallest in high school. Kyle Johnson, Syracuse. Rod Smith, Missouri Southern. Javon Walker, Florida State. Steven Alexander, Oklahoma. In the line, Eric Pierce at left tackle. Ben Hamilton is the left guard. Tom Nalen, the longtime center. The right guard is Cooper Carlisle. And the right tackle is Adam Meadows, the old Colt who was gone for two years. He supplants George Foster, who's been relegated to the bench. And I told you who they were because they don't talk to the media, haven't talked to them in years that's part of the deal but I did hear Tom Nalen on the radio today doing a promotional spot so I guess if commerce is in the equation they will talk oh you did catch him <laughs> yeah huh? I caught him Plummer meanwhile some of his numbers not very good except those 39 and 13 which means he wins three of every four games since he became a Bronco you know one of the things the Chargers are talking about is how do you defend him is he going to be a pocket passer tonight or is he going to try to get to the outside on play action pass and bootleg third down and four play action here pass to the outside into traffic and it's incomplete and it was intended for Javon Walker and deflected and it will be fourth down so it's a three and out. You know the Chargers really miss Sean Merriman you know you're talking to Marty Schottenheimer last night about their defense and and they kind of got lit up last week against Cincinnati and part of it was that they didn't have a good pass rush so that's one thing I mean they still don't have Merriman tonight but that's one thing that they feel that if they're going to have success defensively they have to be able to get to Jake Plummer. Ernst are averages 45 yards a punt here 39 on the road so he loves it at 5280 feet and that's a typical mile high punt fielded at the 32 yard line. Eric Parker one of the San Diego wideouts with a decent run back out to the 49 yard line that was a 54 yard punt and a 15 yard run back 34 degrees Barrowman says who cares these two teams meeting since 1960 when the Chargers came into the league as the Los Angeles Chargers since the merger the Broncos are 30 and 5 with one tie and since 2001 they've outscored San Diego 82 to 17 in the first half here. So a house of horrors for the Chargers through the years. That pass is tipped and intercepted at the 42 yard line by Nick Ferguson. So Rivers throwing on the first play following the punt has it tipped and the Denver defense with a pick. 
first in his last 125 passes for Phillip Rivers. Well, you know, Denver is all about gap control. Every defensive lineman has a gap, and you not only have that gap for run, but you also have that gap for pass. And you have to get your hand up. Gerard Warren was the guy there. He started in. In fact, he was on a stunt. They were on a twist stunt in the middle. He got into his gap, couldn't get back to the quarterback, but he did get his hand in the passing lane. Only the fourth interception of Rivers all season. Denver now at the 42. Can they capitalize on the break? Instead, that pass is batted back. And that's big Jamal Williams. And the last time we saw San Diego on a Sunday night in October against Pittsburgh, he had a monster game. Yeah, and, and, and Jamal Williams, you know where he's going to be. I mean, he's right over the center. And you see him get that, that, that pass rush. And he's not a big pass rusher, but he is so big. So strong, controls that middle that he pushes everything back. Then all he has to do is get about a, a three yard push, get his hands up, and it is tough to throw in the middle when he's in the middle. 6'3, 248. Sean Phillips, who started at outside linebacker, is back in the locker room. We'll check on that. Here's Bell up to the 46. They're minus, as we take a look at the San Diego defense, and they're minus some guys, but here they are. John Cesare, Southern Connecticut. Jamal Williams, Oklahoma State. Igor Olshansky, Oregon. Sean Phillips, Purdue. Randall Godfrey, Georgia. Donnie Edwards, UCLA. Carlos Polk, Nebraska. Quentin Jammer, Texas. Marlon McCree, Kentucky. Terrence Kill, Texas a and Drayton Florence, Tuskegee. That secondary lit up last week by Carson Palmer, but the game was won by San Diego in that miraculous comeback. 42 second half points. Third and six. Plumber out of the shotgun. Under pressure. Gets it away. And that pass is incomplete intended for Mike Bell. So that San Diego defense, and we mentioned minus key guys. Sean Merriman, rookie defensive player of the year. Third game of a four-game steroid suspension. He's gone for two more weeks. Luis Castillo, the outstanding defensive end, out for maybe another week. And Phillips back in the locker room at the moment. Right, and I'll say this. The Bronco offense really hasn't tested him yet. I mean, that was... Third down there, they go three wide receivers, they get a nickel defense, and they throw a none yard pass. Even if that pass had been completed, he would have been tackled right there and still have to punt from the same spot. Bernster in for his second kick, Eric Parker to run it back. High floating kick, fair catch called for, but there to stop it at the one yard line, Karom Cox. One of their special teams, Maven. Great play. Set himself up at the one, and that's where Phillip Rivers will begin San Diego's next drive from the Colorado State Capitol. Diego John trying to come out from the one yard line in the closed end of the stadium. And it's going to be tough for him to hear down here, and I think this, this Bronco defense is really going to press him here and try and get a safety. Do you run? Do you pass? They give it to the up back, and that's Lorenzo Neal, the fullback, who picked up a first down on the third and one earlier. He gets about a yard and a half. Lynch and Gold in on the hit. You know, it's it's funny through the years, John. We always thought, especially in the Shanahan years, of Denver as being an offensive team. But you know, it's almost like they've gone back to the Orange Crush days now. And, and, and it is, and it, you know, it's kind of like the Baltimore Ravens, you know, and. And Billick there, you know, you know, an offensive guy, and he has a defensive team, and they do this. And again, to me, a big part of it in this run defense is John Lynch being able to fit like he is up there as the eighth man up, be a linebacker or safety. And second and eight, this time the pass goes to Neal, and it's all he can do to hold on to it. Good blitz pickup in the backfield by San Diego out to the eight-yard line, so they give him some breathing space. Gold. And Myers in on the tackle. It'll be third down and three. You know what impresses me about this San Diego offense? When they go play action pass, they always get a back or two backs out on the on the pass. You know, a lot of teams will will use play action pass as a pass protection and not get a back out. The Chargers on play action pass always get a back out. Third down and three. Mono Maliuna now sets up in the backfield with Tomlinson. Rivers rolling, and then the pass is caught by Tomlinson out to the 18-yard line. And Ladanian Tomlinson not only closing in on the 1,000 yards rushing for the season, he's their leading receiver. Tomlinson has now caught 45 passes this year. Brandon Mono Maliuna is the, is the second tight end 
but but he's also a very good blocker and they'll they'll use him in, in pass protection so they can have two tight ends one keep him in as a pass protector and then have Antonio Gates and get him out in the pass pattern. Denver walking it up to the line. Lynch was ready to come. This time Tomlinson gets taken down at the 20 yard line. Gain of one, maybe two. Ebenezer Ekubon in on the tackle. You know, I think we're seeing that thing we talked about in the open about, about how well these guys tackle. You know, in some teams, you know, you'll have a couple guests on your team. You know, you have like nine pretty good tacklers and two, two guys just hanging around as guests. This team, there are no guests, and not only that, they're all good tacklers. I like that phrase. That's great. A couple of guests. Uh, there have been corners in football. <laughs> there have been guests in the running game. Yes. Not on this team. One of them might even wind up in the Hall of Fame. Second and seven. Rivers to the outside, and that is caught by Eric Parker. Parker up to the 29-yard line and a first down. Phillip Rivers has been remarkably consistent in so many areas this year. When he throws passes behind the line of scrimmage, there's his rating. When he throws from 1 to 10 yards, 99, which is a great number. 111.6 is terrific from 11 to 20, and then 101.7 when he throws more than 20 yards downfield. So all four distances, normally there's a much greater disparity than you would see there. That is consistency personified. And usually behind the line is the best, and in his, behind the line was the least. Turner is the running back. They split Tomlinson. You've got Rivers throwing, and that is caught by Vincent Jackson, who takes it to the 46. Vincent Jackson played his college football at Northern Colorado. He is 6'5", 241. Remember the last Vincent Jackson who played in the National Football League? You might remember him better as, as Bo, Bo Jackson. Yeah, that was Bo Jackson. Say. Watch what Jackson does here. He just, that's what you do. You find a hole in a zone. And what I like about Philip Rivers, look, he's six foot five, but he uses all six foot five of, I mean, he stands tall in the pocket, and then he can see those zones, and he can see the openings or holes in the zone. Here's Tomlinson now, shaving off the left side. Gets by Ferguson. Down the sideline he goes before he's run out of bounds by Wilson. And so the Chargers, who began this drive at their own one-yard line, are now down to the Denver 21. That's a 24-yard run by LT. That's the Chargers are going to pull their right guard here, Mike Goff, and you're going to see he'll be able to see he gets a lead from the fullback, and then right there, Goff comes through the hole, but Tomlinson says, I don't need any of that. He just outruns the whole thing. Tomlinson now with 44 yards on seven totes. Turner's the running back, flag before the snap. Full start. Yeah, that's the thing. There's a, there's a deal with the running back where you want to be patient. You wait for your lead block. You wait for your old guard. But then at one point you say start. patience, the heck with patience. Number 61, offense, illegal snap. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. Center Nick Hardwick. You know, I, I got to get out of here, and that's what LT did on that play. I mean, you know, he had enough of patience, and then he just, just outran everyone. Now, this isn't bad. When, when Tomlinson needs a rest and you bring in Michael Turner, you know, I'm not saying that he's as good or even as close to Tomlinson, but this guy could start on over half the teams in the NFL right now. He's averaging 6.4 yards a run. He's a restricted free agent at the end of the year. He'll be somebody else's starter before long, and then Ferguson takes him down. He's the guy who comes off the bench, and the great thing about him is he, either he can give Tomlinson a rest or... You can put him in the game, and then you put Tomlinson in the slot, and that creates all kinds of problems for the defense. Yeah, what it does, you put Tomlinson out, and then they better put someone out there. So if they take the safety and put him out there, or a defensive back, then that doesn't allow that eighth man to get up for the run. So that would make it easier for Michael Turner to run. Tomlinson, about a yard. He gets to the 14. It's going to be third down and a long two. Right now, San Diego has run 21 plays in the period. Denver has run six. They've had two three and outs. And the Chargers are very good in this area. It's the red zone to most people, to Marty Schottenheimer and the Chargers. It's a gold zone. But I think to be good in this area, you have to have a good running back. Remember the old Dallas Cowboys with Emmett Smith? They were so good in the red area. These guys, because of Tomlinson, are special in this red area. They've scored touchdowns on each of their last eight thrusts inside the 20. 
third and two. And that pass to the outside is caught by Parker, who swung around toward the sideline, covered on the play by Darren Williams. And that will make it a first down and goal from the four yard line. Now how about the timing between Rivers and Eric Parker on this? Watch this ball. It's going to be thrown before Parker even turns around. And when he turns around, that ball is already halfway there. That's when you talk about being on the same page, chemistry, all those things with a quarterback and receiver. We just saw it there. Waning seconds of the quarter, a drive that began at the San Diego one. First and goal. Tomlinson, 15 touchdowns in his last five games, 16 now in his last five and one quarter. Ladanian Tomlinson already this season 17 rushing touchdowns two receiving touchdowns that is 19 in nine and a quarter games and he is something special and watches his lead block Lorenzo Neal there he is going to get his guy and just keep him and just just give Tomlinson that soft corner. Nate Kading for the point after. And that will make it 7 nothing. a 99 yard drive 11 plays six runs five passes LT to the EZ 7 nothing Chargers. And Mountain the Chargers have 133 yards Denver 10 in a first quarter that is eight seconds remaining Nate Kading to kick off Mike Bell the starting running back tonight will field it at the one yard line and Bell gets out past the 25 he is tackled at the 27 and there's a penalty flag down at the 21 yard line with one second remaining on the clock penalty will be against Denver and that will back them up personal foul face mask 89 on the return team during the run back half the distance to the goal receivers will keep the ball first down that is Nate Jackson Ladanian Tomlinson has made it seven nothing San Diego the India week from tonight you know about Donovan McNabb torn ACL Dallas knocking off Indy today so no unbeaten teams left on this 19th night of November. One of these teams will go to eight and two. The other will be seven and three. It's seven to nothing on the final play of the period here. Mike Bell with a penalty flag down will take it out to the 19 yard line. You've got an offside coming up here against San Diego. So they're going to have a choice of a first and five or a second and three. Corolla looking over and saying you want to decline it. Plummer saying. Well, Corolla will tell us what he just said. <laughs> Someone's blowing a whistle. Right. Offside defense, number 92. It's a five yard penalty. Will he play first down? So it'll be first and five when the second period commences. End of one, San Diego seven. Denver nothing. Sunday night football resumes after these messages. A, a play here going this way it's an untimed down on a penalty at the end of the quarter and thus it is Bell and he will pick up the first down that was a first and five and now the first quarter has officially climaxed as Bell takes the ball over the 20 Shanahan's team first and 10 when we come back and start the second quarter this time we promise. Slow getting up. He must really be injured. Some of the headlines as we conclude the 11th week of the season. All of the buys are done. Each team playing their 11th game today. Or 10th of the season today for both of these teams as Plummer starts the second quarter by getting sacked. 
That was Ryan Bingham who comes in and Bingham is only in the game because Cesare went out of the game a moment ago. Andrea what's the injury update. Well with Jack Cesare who you just mentioned he they're looking at his left ankle on the sideline now as for Sean Phillips who's been out a couple of series they have been checking out his calf they massaged him they've gone over it a couple of times so it's just amazing that the Charger defense continues to be depleted. Sort of reminds us of the Giants last week who played very well against the Bears in the first half and then the attrition took its toll second down and 11 from the 22 yard line. Plummer over the middle and that pass is incomplete. He went for the number three receiver. That's Brandon Marshall a rookie out of the University of Central Florida and he was covered on the play by Terrence Keel. It'll be third and eleven. Yeah the Broncos went three wide receivers. They had Steven Alexander in the backfield and then he went in motion and split out so it gave him a four wide four wide receiver look. Plummer had good time in there. And he led Brandon Marshall right where he had to be. Marshall has to make that play. Plummer has yet to complete a pass. 0 for 5. It's third down and 11 from the 21 yard line. Blitz from the outside. He has to dump it off for Bell. Nice screen there, and that'll be a first down. So they pay the price for blitzing as Plummer reads it, gets the pass away quickly, and with a couple of blockers, that is a gain of 13 yards and a first down off a third and 11. Well, you just said he hadn't completed the pass and when you you have to help your quarterback sometimes to get him started and this is one way to get him started on a screen pass and Plummer did a good job invite the rush invite the rush let him get right there and then dump it off to your back. Stephen Cooper couldn't get there in time Bell made the catch. And after he made the catch he just ran downhill and that's what Mike Shanahan always liked about Mike Bell. Now Damian Nash comes into the game. He's the running back. This is him. And Damian Nash who had been on the practice squad until last week takes the ball all the way to the San Diego 40 yard line. So a Tatum Bell hurt. Mike Bell gets the start. They give him a break. And then Damian Nash who had been in the Tennessee camp. Played his college football at Missouri, picks up a first down, 26 yard run. And this is what they were worried about that he was cutting back too soon, that you have to take it to the hole, press the hole, press the line of scrimmage, and then cut back. Nash cut back, cushed back perfectly that time. Injury timeout here. Coach, which field? Stephen Cooper replaces him. Jacques Césaire comes back into the game. And the ball is handed off to Damian Nash who just broke that run Nash played four games for Tennessee last year had been on Denver's practice squad and now in the lineup tonight. And again you know one thing when you take a guy off the practice squad he, you know he looks good in practice and Mike Shanahan puts a lot of credit on that but you still don't know how he's going to do in the game and the the thing that they worried about Nash as I was saying is that he was always looking for the cutback and he would start his cutback before he got to the hole but on that one cutback he got to the hole that was a perfect cutback Shanahan donning reading glasses for the first time went to those a couple of weeks ago they give it to Nash again and Nash takes the ball to the 34 Mike has 2015 vision at distance but all of a sudden he was having trouble reading some in his office before the game tonight I said is that a prescription he said no it's six bucks at the drugstore. He said his wife just didn't want him because he only wears them when when his offense is on the field because when the defense is there obviously he doesn't need his play sheet and his wife didn't want him to get one of those ropes you know that we get tie the glasses on. Well Marty's worn glasses for years. Yeah but Marty now Marty's deal is he doesn't wear the headset all the time. I mean, Marty's like half headset on half set headset off. Third and two a long two. And this is Mike Bell and he appears to have the first down Randall Godfrey the ex cowboy makes the tackle will move the change first down at the twenty nine yard line. Yeah and the thing that this offensive line does so well better than anyone else is watch just how they zone block here how they all all get off together and work as one the whole group you see how they all move to the right they all move to the right then they get a good lead block and that's enough push to get a first down. But this is a very good offensive line, a very good middle of the offensive line. One of the best zone blockers in football with the run. Over the years, it's held up since the days when Alex Gibbs was their 
offensive line coach the ball at the 25 from Bell and John is as we all know I mean through the years it doesn't matter who you plug in they had Terrell Davis who was tremendous of course but then Mike Anderson and guys like Olandis Gary and no matter who they plugged in they always seem to get a thousand yards twelve hundred yards sometimes even fourteen or fifteen hundred. Yeah and I think that you know they just felt it was it was a system because it's not only who they plugged in at the running back but who they plug in, in the offensive line I mean they have a, a, a rookie free agent left tackle Eric Pierce is doing a real good job. They have a veteran Adam Meadows who's just starting for his second game but they play well together. He was taking the place of Matt Lepsis who got hurt as after the year. Now Javon Walker who's been their big play guy the former Green Bay Packer who's had some huge plays to lead the wins over New England and Pittsburgh makes the catch spins out of a tackle and moves the chains. Walker who was hurt last year knee surgery came over here take a look at that some of the plays he's made that 83 yard reception against New England and that 72 yard run early on against Pittsburgh to help win a game at Heinz Field and there you go players with 70 yard touchdown runs and catches in one season since 2000 both playing tonight Walker and Tomlinson at the 12 up back first man through to the fullback this is Kyle Johnson and he takes it to the five yard line so playing the Lorenzo Neal role he picks up about seven you know don't you feel that sometimes you just need a play to get you going and Jake Plummer needed that and that play was that screen pass he hadn't completed a pass boom he goes to the screen and that gets him going now the next thing he has to do is start getting Javon Walker involved in the game and he just did that to bring the big stud Williams back in the middle here second down and three they need Williams now but one thing about this Denver Bronco offensive line we talk about their zone they also cut very well and second and three the handoff to Bell and he appears to be just slightly shy of the first down this drive began back at Denver's 12 yard line we talked about San Diego and how proficient they are in the red zone and so is Denver 13 and 21 third best in the league and didn't you always feel that, that Mike Shanahan was one of the best play callers in football absolutely you know, and as you say I mean assistant coaches change offensive coordinators defensive coordinators quarterbacks running backs but the one constant here with the Broncos has been Mike Shanahan third and a short one Mike Bell touchdown Denver After San Diego goes 99, the Broncos answer with an 88-yard drive. Hey, he wasn't even active last week. Watch his right side here. Here's here's Carlisle. Here's Meadows. Watch, they just double, and that's that's the block that gets the play started. Boom, boom, they get on them, then they get up on the next level, and that was enough to get Mike Bell in the end zone. I mean that's what these these linemen do they'll start on a double but they don't stay with it they come up and get the linebacker on that second level Jason Elam converts 8 17 remaining in the half first place in the AFC West at stake 7 7 the Eagles hang on in the NFC East you know they'll be rooting like crazy for Jacksonville against the Giants tomorrow 35 and 5 Indy comes in 9 and 1 losing to Dallas today. A yard into the end zone Michael Turner will run it out and Turner with a good run back still going breaking tackles all the way out to the 37 yard line with eight minutes and eight seconds remaining in the opening half seven all. He's an icon you know so many kids like myself looked up to him growing up. And just to be mentioned in the same breath with him, and now having the chance to break some of his records, it's unreal. Ladanian Tomlinson talking about history and writing some of his own this season. And here is Tomlinson, and Tomlinson, who's closing in on a thousand yards, is up to the 43-yard line. Broke out of a John Lynch tackle. 
Ladanian with 16 in his last six games, the most in NFL history over that span. And John, with one touchdown tonight, he'll be the fastest to 100 in the history of the NFL. Watch him, and that's that's the thing that John Lynch is talking about. He said that Tomlinson reminds him of Barry Sanders. He said he used to play Barry Sanders twice a year, and he said he knows what it feels like, and he just felt it right there. And this time he gets tripped up in the backfield. He can't get out of his own tracks. Ian Gold is there. The fastest to 100 would be Jim Brown and Emmett Smith. They each did it in their first 93 games. Now Ladanian with one tonight. That was his 99th in 89 games. This being the 89th. So he's almost a lock to break that mark. Third down and three among some others as well. The Broncos are in nickel and they have Dominic Foxworth when they get in nickel he plays Antonio Gates. Play clock at one and Rivers the pump fake and then deep down the sideline and that pass is not caught in bounds as Vincent Jackson was there it's incomplete he was on the chalk never had possession Champ Bailey and Carome Cox were there and San Diego will punt. Now you're not going to get a lot on Champ Bailey I'm surprised that they tried this you know if you're going to go deep I would I would think maybe you would pick on, on the other side maybe try that I don't know that Champ Bailey when you need a play I don't know that Champ Bailey is the guy you try it on although Eric Parker almost had that one didn't it Jackson yep Mike Cypher is not a punt wobbly spinning kick fair caught 16 yard line that's Darren Williams holding it in there so Plummer who led an 88 yard drive goes back to work from the 16 the game is tied back in Denver Al Michaels John Madden Andrea Kramer game tied 7 7 6 34 remaining in the half low scoring but plenty of offense to this point Denver starts from the 16 yard line toss back to Bell gain of about five you know it's, it's kind of a role reversal here John I'm thinking a couple of questions right now at this point in the season is San Diego's defense good enough to get them to the Super Bowl and ironically is Denver's offense good enough to get them because the other units are playing very well you know first of all San Diego's defense tonight wouldn't be but I think when they get Castillo back and Merriman back you know you know they're going to get Merriman back in two weeks probably Castillo back next week those are their two best defensive players I think they'll have a chance to be Denver's offense I'm not sure I'm mean, that depends on how well Jake Plummer plays he drops straight back here he goes deep on second and six into double coverage and Javon Walker looked around and thought he was impeded but he wasn't Terrence Keel covering on the play and Drayton Florence with him as well third down and six but isn't it interesting I me mean, through the years you've always known about Denver's offense now you're talking about their defense and with San Diego it could have gone either way but now the offense is so potent but what about the other side right and I and I think that their defense remember when Sean Merriman was playing and and you know they would have him on one side Phillips on the other side Castillo inside they could really put the heat on the quarterback and remember they did that to Indy last year and I think once they get these back these guys back I think their defense is pretty good there's Castillo he should be back next week. When they take on Oakland at home, Denver has taken a timeout. 547 to the half, 7 7. In lineup, you don't want to miss. That's tomorrow, deal or no deal. Then the cheerleader episode of Heroes and Studio 60. That's tomorrow night, prime time, right here on NBC. It is third down and six for the Denver Broncos at the 20 yard line. Sean Phillips. The Charger linebacker is back in the locker room. So it's paste and glue on that San Diego defensive side as Plummer goes back and launches one deep, and that is incomplete. And again, he's going for Javon Walker and staying with him that time is Antonio Cromarty, the number one draft choice, the rookie out of Florida State. Yeah, and that's what he was looking for. I mean, Javon Walker is his go-to guy. Javon Walker is his big play guy. And when you get 
your go to big play guys single coverage you want to get the ball to him and that he went to the right place. Yeah, his rating is 105 this year when he tries to hit Walker and 57 is his rating when he goes to everybody else. Paul Ernster to punt. That's a wobbler and a line drive kick that is fair caught by Eric Parker at the San Diego 41. Schottenheimer and Shanahan they met a lot of times through the years but there it is points per game all time you can see Mike is fourth all time Marty 33rd but now Schottenheimer and again they started the season with Marty Ball and the fans were upset in San Diego but right now his team scoring about twice as many points as is Denver of course it all began with that, that Sunday night game with Pittsburgh when they really took the training wheels off right and if you give uh, uh, Mike Shanahan Ladanian Tomlinson and Philip Rivers he might do the same thing play fake Rivers over the middle that passes high and Lynch almost intercepted it after the deflection Keenan McCardell was the intended receiver. You know somewhere here he's going to have to get his tight end Antonio Gates involved I think that you know he's he's looking for the wide receivers he's looking for the big play in the middle and 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 there's a playmaker too I mean he's his number one receiver this season is Tomlinson his number two receiver is Antonio Gates and he hasn't thrown him one yet tonight and I think you know it's not that hard to get a tight end open I mean the way they can move him around play action pass crossing those kinds of things I think he has to get him in the game now it'll be sooner than later second and ten and that pass is caught and taking it out of bounds is Parker stretching for the extra yard or two I mean the minute you mentioned it last week with Jeremy Shockey who caught a pass well and and Gates would have scored a touchdown if you would have thrown it to him on that mm. one I mean you know he's a he's a good move guy and sometimes when you have a tight end that makes moves you have to give him that extra beat to make that move Gates made a move that time and he would have been wide open in the middle of the field third down and two Tomlinson goes out of the game on third and two that means Michael Turner is in the backfield. And this is Turner. And he will not get the first down. Ian Gold, who missed last week's game with a hamstring pull, is there. And Ekubon as well. And that's, and that's right. And that's why he's not going to get the first down because Ian Gold was there. Again, we always talk about this you know, short yardage, a running game, penetration. Ian Gold is going to get it. He gets it in the backfield before Michael Turner can get. See, he gets him right there before he can get to the line of scrimmage. Now Mike Cyphers to punt. Darren Williams back to return it. Fair catch called for. 14 yard line. 38 yard boot. They winding down. Some of the things that have happened today. The Cowboys beat Indianapolis 21 to 14 behind Tony Romo. Indy now 9 and 1. Cincinnati rebounding after that disaster last week, knocking off Drew Brees and the Saints 31 to 16, despite a 510 yard passing performance by the ex Charger. And Buffalo wins at the end, knocking off the Texans 24 to 21. So that Cincinnati defense got breeze this week and they have Philip Rivers last week. <laughs> That's right. But at least they won today. Damian Nash is the running back. They fake to him. Plummer steps up. Some old snake moves from his days at Arizona State before Igor Olshansky runs him down from behind at the 19 yard line. That was a heck of an effort by Olshansky. When you can be the right defensive end or the end on the opposite side and come all the way across the field and catch Jake Plummer from behind that's a big play. Olshansky is up here and he's going to run he's going to run around and then he's going to come from behind and catch Jake Plummer. That is what they call second effort. 6 6 3 0 9 the one time Oregon Duck Igor Olshansky. And this is Nash fighting, fighting off the first would-be tackle. Jamal Williams was able to 
penetrate there and it will be third down and four now with 320 to go in the half. Yeah and that's why it's so tough to run against this Charger defense. It all starts here with Jamal Williams and the penetration that he gets. You see and you're talking about eating up blockers. He eats up three blockers and that allows all the other white jerseys to get there. Eating up is a good way to put it. <laughs> That's not all he eats up is it is blocking. But, but, but to me, he's he's the most dominating nose tackle in football today. Makes it a lot easier to play that 3-4. Timeout is taken here by Denver. Prior to a third down and four. Under three to go in the half. Broncos finally got it accomplished. After years and years at the old mile high, this Stadium opening in the 2001 season. I'll tell you that old mile high was a very difficult <laughs> place to play. They had the south stands, and the visiting locker room was under the south stands. And you would go, you know, you know, call up the whole team to get, give your pregame speech, and they would start pounding, boom, 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 and and you couldn't hear a thing. You couldn't talk. No one could hear you. Nothing. And then you would go out, and they'd start throwing school balls at you because you had to go out right underneath them. Third down and four as Plummer throws, and that is a fingertip catch by Brandon Marshall. Over the 50 he goes to the 40-yard line, and the flag comes in at the end of the play. But Brandon Marshall, a rookie out of Central Florida, their fourth-round draft choice has ascended to the number three spot. Clinton Hard is shaken up on the play. 40-yard catch and run. And Brandon Marshall is one of those big targets you have now in football. Six foot four, 222 pounds. Hey, Mike Shanahan really likes him, and and a quarterback like Jake Plummer, you can see him all the way. And when he gets in the middle, you can really see him. But he is a big guy. Illegal block in the back, number 84, offense, 10 yard penalty, first down. You know, here's here's Brandon Marshall here. And you see how big he is and how strong he is and he has a quickness that goes with it and then when when he gets his shoulder inside and gets even then he can run that in and then you're going to see Javon Walker somewhere in there comes in and fouls. And that's a foul from the spot so. A good part of the play counts. They move it back to the 43. There's your foul. So they get the first down, but they move it back to the Denver 43 yard line. That was a kind of a picky foul, yeah. though, wasn't it? Yeah. You, you, you got to let, I mean, this is football. If you have to let some things go, that wasn't a block that was going to hurt anyone or do anything or affect anything in the play. Sometimes it's the imagery. Screen for Nash. Over the 50, he goes and he pulls his way. For a first down, when I say imagery, I mean the game is played so fast. And if you've ever been on the field or on the sideline during a game, I mean it goes by in a blur. And you have to give it to the officials and you hand it to them. They can't get everything perfectly as the two minute warning comes. And sometimes it looks as if it's more insidious than it is. You know, and you wish, you know, if there's a, if there's any doubt, just don't call it. Just let them play. Two minute warning. Broncos at the Charger 44 when we come back. We had a halftime show coming up from uh, just outside the 30 Rock skating ring. Bob, Chris, Sterling, and Jerome get it all caught up. Dallas winning, knocking Indy off its perch for the first time this year. Donovan McNabb done for the year, and all of a sudden things a little hotter in the AFC. Baltimore just a game back of Indy, as will the winner of this game. Just one game back in the overall AFC standings as Nash breaks one again inside the 25 to the 23. So Damian Nash who played in four games with Tennessee had been on Denver's practice squad activated last week and he's been a stud tonight 22 yards here and Nash has already run for 55 yards this evening. Right and the Broncos are going no huddle and maybe you can put anyone back there <laughs> from the 22. This is Nash again and he rambles to the 11 yard line tackled there by Quentin Jammer. Yeah, he not only rambled but he rumbled and stumbled. <laughs> you know you had to get the Nash. I couldn't help myself. You remember the Nash right. ramble. We yes, got an I injury here. Yes, oh. you do. Marlon McCree the safety who came over from Carolina is hurt. So again another San Diego defensive San Diego. injury. First charge timeout. Boy, they are getting depleted, and Marlon McCree is is really the kind of the leader of this defense now. 
Look at Nash and Nash looking up at the board to watch himself gain 22. One thing about Nash, he does he does finish those runs. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what you're always looking for. Jammer made the tackle, but McCree is still Please down. Please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Mike Shanahan felt by by not suiting up Tatum Bell tonight, by keeping him active, that he'll be okay to play on Thursday. He felt if he would have played tonight, you know, and and wasn't ready, he couldn't help him, and then he wouldn't have him Thursday either. But by by going with Bell and Nash tonight, then he thinks on Thursday he'll have Tatum Bell, Mike Bell, and Damian Nash. Well, I mean, it's solid and sound thinking when you think about it. You know, you've got two games in four days. Go to the left side of the screen to see McCree. He's number 20, and he tries to he tries to avoid Clinton Hart, and then goes down and it's the right knee. Hmm. Now you always imagine a knee as you know someone having their foot planted and getting hit or one of those types of things, and and that was really no contact. It was just kind of if any contact, he just tripped over his own guy. So first down when we come back Marty with Marcus Harris on the sideline Jake Plummer slow start tonight but then a couple of big plays for him they went 88 yards you had Mike Bell getting into the end zone Philip Rivers tonight has been held pretty much in check though he did lead him on that 99 yard march culminated by the Ladanian Tomlinson touchdown the 99th of his career standings in this division coming in Denver and San Diego each seven and two Kansas City had its hands full today but knocked off Oakland with a late touchdown and then Oakland had a chance to maybe win it at the end and there was an interception by the Chiefs and McCree in a uh, scene that has to be very disheartening to any San Diego fan helped off the field and Bao Ju the ex Packer will have to come in and take his spot at strong safety. I tell you the the Charger defense in his first half is really getting depleted but I will say this group here oops not that group the offensive line of the Denver Broncos have been doing an outstanding job they are dominating on this drive Sean Phillips the linebacker is back and here goes Bell inside the five to the four the undrafted rookie who played all four years at Arizona very few guys of course spent all four years and then wind up in the NFL as a starter but Mike did. Yeah, I would think right now, you know, Jock Cesare isn't Jamal Williams. And it, it, when you get someone like that, they get him, they get him not only stood up, they get him going back, and then they get him turned around to where he came from. And now Jamal Williams is back in. I, I would think anytime anyone gets inside the red zone, Jamal Williams has to be in there and run down. Second and two. Bell again. Bell for the touchdown. An 86 yard drive. So Mike Bell, who led the Wildcats in each of his four years in Tucson, undrafted, comes in here, impressive in training camp, doesn't start though at the beginning of the year. They go with Tatum Bell, but he gets the start tonight. And Mike Bell has now run for 44 yards and both been for scores. Yeah, right. It can be backs, but I'll tell you, this this drive was really the offensive line dominating the Charger defense. His fifth rushing touchdown of the season, leading all rookies. Elam for the point after. And the Denver Broncos have 193 total yards in the half. And with 34 ticks left on the clock, the Broncos are on top 14 to 7. Yeah, we're going to see here what this Bronco run game is all about. It's, it's a zone. You, you see all five offensive linemen working in concert. The running back making one cut and then run downhill. That's what it is. Zone blocking, everyone take off together, one cut downhill. That is a pretty thing because there's not an onside and an offside. It's both sides. Every man, that whole offensive line has to work together or there wouldn't be any cutback. It may be play side. Play side was left side, but it ended up a touchdown right side. John they've been so successful doing it just that way for so many years. Why can't more teams emulate what they did as McGree gets carted off. 
because I think I think the problem is with a smaller offensive line you have to have a smaller offensive line you have to have a small center you have to have smaller guards and they have trouble in drop back pass protection so you have to give up a little and you have to have and I'm surprised that Jake Plummer hasn't gone to bootlegs and stuff like that yet but it's hard you will get a push on your defense uh, uh, on your offense up the middle. So what you need you need a mobile quarterback basically to go with that right line. right if you have that then, then you have to have a mobile quarterback or a quarterback with a quick release but you are going to get pushed in the middle on pass protection. Aloha John Elway. Here's Cromarty the rookie out of Florida State who runs it back to the 22 yard line with 29 seconds. The Chargers were the highest scoring offense in the league. The Broncos had allowed the fewest points. 33 for San Diego per game only 12.3 allowed by Denver's the first time since 1997 when San Francisco met Denver on a Monday night that a team of the most points scored had played a team of the fewest points allowed this late in the season. And Shanahan remembers that game. Marty Schottenheimer. Been a house of horrors for him. He's three and thirteen lifetime in this stadium, plus 0 and 1 in postseason. And Rivers swings it out to Tomlinson, but that is incomplete. And we asked him last night what it was, if there's anything in those games or any constant anything. And he said vehemently, I'll tell you what it's not. It's not the altitude. <laughs> <laughs> Which means it probably is the altitude. Which means I don't want anybody to use that as an excuse so don't even think about it. Yeah but they remind you of that I mean there's a yeah. sign and there's always been a sign here. You know as you come out of your locker room there's a sign that reminds you of my high. Second down and ten at the twenty two. And that'll be a sack at the sixteen yard line Ebenezer Ecubon wraps up Philip Rivers. And the clock should now tick down to the end of the half. So Rivers is 8 of 13, and they've limited him to 74 yards. Bell's run for two touchdowns. Bob Costas and the gang standing by for the Toyota halftime report coming your way from New York. 14 7 Broncos at the break. Toyota halftime show coming up the second half. Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrea Kramer. Up to the moment the standings in the AFC West the winner of this game goes to eight and two the loser goes to seven and three and then Kansas City right there just behind Denver 14 San Diego seven Broncos Monday Tuesday and Wednesday they prepare for their Thursday night game Thanksgiving night at Kansas City San Diego goes home to face Oakland Denver will get the ball Kading to kick off and here we go from Denver third quarter. This will be Cecil Sapp running back the kick. And the Denver fullback looking more like a scat back. Runs it back into San Diego territory all the way to the 48 yard line. Boy, if he would have had speed that would have been a touchdown. You know the first thing you do is he, is on a kickoff return. You want to get into the wedge. There's a wedge. They're all holding hands. Get into the wedge and then break right through the wedge as Sap did there. And then right here you have one guy and you have to outrun him. He makes a good move there, makes a good move there. And then when you know you can't run, when you know you don't have speed, is when you're running forward, looking backward, putting both hands in the ball, you know you're about to get caught. 53 yard run back, Antonio Cromarty who finally ran him down. Now on a short field this is Mike Bell taken down after a gain of two by Jamal Williams. Let's go to Andrea. Well I talked to Marty Schottenheimer coming out of the locker room and he seemed pretty shell shocked about how depleted his defense is. Marlon McCree and Sean Phillips both have calf injuries. He said he hopes they're going to be able to go back in. He said they have to play more physical but at this point he's just hoping to get 11 guys out there on the field. And as John mentioned he said they have to get the ball to Antonio Gates on offense. Well they are both back and I'm stunned because McCree was 
helped off the field, and that looked like it could have been serious, but there he is. They can do amazing. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, they can do amazing stuff in the locker room at halftime. Wow. On second and seven, this is Mike Bell, stopped by Jacques Césaire, who also missed a few plays when he was hurt in the first half. It'll be third down and five. Some numbers now through 30 minutes of competition. Denver racking up 193 yards on a pace for close to 400 yards. And last week, of course, it was Carson Palmer who threw for over 400 alone for Cincinnati, but the miracle comeback by San Diego, the great offensive performance by Rivers and company, won the game for the Chargers. Third down and four. Plummer short drop, quick flip over the middle, caught, and that's the venerable Rod Smith making the catch, and that's the first catch of the game for Rod in his 12th year at a Missouri Southern. Yeah, you always think about Jake Plummer and running and bootlegging and that stuff, but he also has a very quick release. I mean, Rod Smith comes in a slant, and, and there's a hole there between the two corners, and he's just going to hit him right there. He just waits, and then he has him, and then, boom, that ball was right out of there. Rod Smith, second oldest wide receiver in the league. The oldest is on the other side, Keenan McCardell. First down from the 30-yard line. Now they give it to Nash. They've been going with Mike Bell and Damian Nash tonight with Tatum Bell inactive. Short gain. It'll be second down and nine. Yeah, so Carlos Polk is also back. He just made that tackle. So the Chargers are starting to get some of those guys back now. And you think the running game of the Broncos, what the Chargers on defense have to do is they have to take away that cutback because they have that zone blocking and they're running it, you know, you know, whole side and then breaking back and they're giving them those cutback lanes. And on that one there, Carlos Polk, the outside linebacker, took away the cutback lane. So Jamal Williams spreading his wings, second down and nine. Nash is the running back, quick throw to the outside. This is caught by Javon Walker and a nice tackle by Sean Phillips, who drags him down from the rear at the 24 yard line. It'll be third down and four for the Broncos, the beneficiaries of that 53 yard Cecil Sap run back of the kickoff. You know, I'm sure this is one of the things, Al, that they talked about at halftime. You know, how are we going to get the ball to Javon Walker? They lined him up in the left side, brought him all the way across the formation, and then just threw it. That's a wide receiver screen. You just throw him the ball, and the screen develops in front of him on the wide side of the field. Comes back off ACL surgery. The former Packer traded to Denver in the offseason. Third down and four. Nash. Stop just about the line of scrimmage. So right now you are looking at about a 42-yard field goal for a kicker who could someday wind up in the Hall of Fame. I mean, his numbers, Jason Elam's numbers, have been that good. Yeah, he's a great one. But watch what the Charger defense does right here. They take away the cutback. You see, instead of going that way, they just penetrated on that backside so that he had no place to cut back to. Jason Elam has spent all 14 of his seasons in this league. With the Broncos, played his college football at Hawaii. Drafted in the third round in 93. Jake Plummer to hold. 42 yard boot is good. So Sapp sets him up with that run back. And the Denver Broncos trying to move into first in the AFC West. Extend their lead to 10. Well, we're getting you ready for Thursday. What do you think, John? Well, I think happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And uh, just kind of goes together, doesn't it? Turkey and all that stuff and professional football. And to me, it's always one of the great days of the year. Turkey and all that stuff. Right, and then now we have three football games, three <laughs> NFL games that day. I think it's tough to get a lot better than that. Yep. Don't the Broncos know that they go to Kansas City and that'll be a big game on the NFL Network on Thursday night. And our best wishes to the NFL Network and their new venture as that is down in the end zone. And San Diego starts from the 20-yard line, aligning the stars now for Phillip Rivers. Eight out of 13, and that one interception off the deflection led them on a 99-yard drive. Tomlinson scored the touchdown. And oddly enough, not only has Gates not caught a pass, he's not been thrown to. Yeah, and they have to know that. You know, it's it's part the quarterback, it's part Gates getting open, it's part the protection. 
but it's also part of coaching. I mean, you have to find a way to get the ball to your guy. Start with four wides here on first down from the 20 yard line and Rivers will sling it to the outside and they read that play perfectly that's champ Bailey hitting Antonio Gates so they go to Gates and Bailey is right on him. That was one of the ideas but it wasn't a very good one was it they they split it out like the four wide receiver look at Antonio Gates is the outside guy he's way out here and they're just going to give him the ball and let him run over champ Bailey. Well by the time he got the ball champ Bailey was right there again. I don't know if I want to get the ball to Antonio Gates. I don't know that I really want to work on Champ Bailey. No. Tomlinson stopped by Michael Myers. Champ Bailey came over, of course, in that deal for Clinton Portis, that huge one for one trade. His given name is Roland. His brother plays for Detroit, Boss Bailey. His given name is Rodney. <laughs> the parents, they, they started calling one kid Champ and one kid Boss. Yeah, and that's well, how they once, got their nicknames. Once you do the champ, you, you just can't have <laughs> champ and regular name. You got to go boss. Third down and six at the 24 yard line. Nine and a half to play in the third quarter. Gold showed blitz. Backs into coverage. Rivers to the outside. It's picked off by Darren Williams. Darren Williams for the touchdown. Rivers had been picked off three times all season and that's twice tonight. Well you know these Denver corners they play look they have their back to the sideline looking in at the quarterback. This is just a zone. Darren Williams is going to bump the outside receiver ride him look back in at Rivers and, and he sees Rivers all the way look at he's just sitting there. I mean that that is it's a bad decision by Rivers and he's just throwing right into full zone coverage. It was a good play by Darren Williams because he was in essence really playing two. He went to the point after. And just like the late 70s when they went to the Super Bowl for the first time and the Orange Crush let him. The D in Denver stands for defense 24-7. Darren Williams have been bothered with a bum shoulder but you'd never know it on that play and Rivers going over the pictures with Cam Cameron the offensive coordinator and San Diego will get the ball back but down now 24 to 7 as Ernster's kick is taken at the one yard line by Michael Turner and Turner trying to ignite something with a good run back and he's able to give it to him. Up to the 39 yard line with 915 left in the quarter. Let's go back to the touchdown. Now let's watch the the technique that they use first. Here's Darren Williams here. Here's Champ Bailey. You see they both have that same technique where they have the back to the sideline both looking in at the quarterback. Now they're going to play zone as we let it go. You see Darren Williams down here. He lets the receiver go. He lets the outside receiver go up to here. He lets him go and then he picks him as he's coming out. Now Philip Rivers thought that he would run off with the deep guy. He doesn't. He stays there for the short guy. And that's what Philip Rivers was talking to Cam Cameron about. You know, I thought he was going to run with the outside guy. He started to run with the outside guy and stopped and came with the short outside guy. First time Rivers has been intercepted in the second half of any game this year. Out of the shotgun, a little screen for Tomlinson. And Ladanian Tomlinson across the 50. That's a first down. And John, without reading minds or lips, I would have to think the feeling might be on the San Diego bench, if nothing else. Hey guys, we were here last week. We were down by 21 at Cincinnati. And you know what happened? And I'm sure that's what Marty Schottenheimer is telling him right now. The same thing that, that, that he told him last week. He said at halftime, I told him, look. Let's just go out and play 0 0. I don't care what happens this second half, but let's go out and win the second half. And in doing that, then they won the game. Now I think they have to take it from this point and say, okay, 24 to 7, let's take it from this point like it's 0 to 0 and just win from this point on. First and 10 at the 46 yard line. Rivers, the fake draw, buys time, stepping up. He'll carry himself, but not very far. Offensive coordinator is Cam Cameron. 
who was the head coach at Indiana in the late 90s. He had Antoine Randall as his quarterback. Cam was a quarterback at Indiana. He also played basketball in the early 80s. His coach, of course, you got it, Bob Knight. And Bob Knight recommended Cam Cameron to Bo Schembechler when Bo was at Michigan, and that's how Cam started his coaching career. Yeah, and then and then Cam Cameron coached for Bo Schembechler for 10 years, and or Bo Schembechler just passed away the other day. And, and no matter what kind of football, high school, college, pro football, Bo Schembechler was one of the all-time greats. Huge influence. Huge. Second and nine. Rivers. Stepping away, then throws, and that pass is caught by Vincent Jackson, who just juggled for a moment. He thinks he has the first down, but he does not. They're going to spot the ball just outside the 41 yard line. It will be third down. Elvis Doomerville popped him. Yeah, that's what I what I like about Philip Rivers, though, is when he decides to throw it, he he is going to zip it. I mean, he has time, he waits, he waits, he waits. And then he really put the mustard on that one to Vincent Jackson. Third and one. Rivers after resetting the slot. He gives the ball to Neal. And Neal gets upended by Wilson. But not until Lorenzo picks up another first down. They love to go to him on third and fourth and one. And normally he prevails. Yeah, because they don't like to go to the tailback who's, who's back seven yards. And on that one they went unbalanced line this is interesting they have a guard then they have a tackle and their their right tackle they bring from from here over to here so they have on this side they have center guard tackle tackle tight end and that's their power side and they ran to the unbalanced or power side or the two tackle side first and ten at the thirty five yard line on a big drive for San Diego down by seventeen and trying to climb back to the outside goes the pass and that is caught by Eric Parker. Parker gets inside the 25 yard line. They're going to spot the ball at the 20 tackled by Champ Bailey. You know when you go unbalanced what you can do is you can get both your big tackles on the same side of the line of scrimmage. And then when you can get the tight end that's about as much power as you can get on one side where, where you have your your left tackle McNeil and then you bring your right tackle over next to him and then you run in behind him on short yardage. They'll also do it in the red zone. They'll also do it on goal line. They also do it against nickel. Empty the backfield. Cam Cameron, one of the few offensive coordinators who calls the plays from the field. And this play is called to Antonio Gates. And he'll make it a first and goal at the three. Most teams have the offensive coordinator upstairs. Then he'll call down to normally the quarterback's coach. He'll call the play in. But Cameron calls the play directly in from the sideline to Rivers. And there's Antonio Gates. He was the second guy in. And this is this is what he does so well. You know, you know he just runs that option run. He goes up on the guy and then he gives him a move one way and goes the other way. If he's inside, he goes outside. If he's outside, he goes inside. Will Tomlinson get his hundredth career touchdown? He has 99. He has a hundred. Fastest to a hundred in history. Ladanian Tomlinson into the end zone for the second time tonight and for the 20th time this season and San Diego is back in the game. You know you look at Ladanian Tomlinson here and this is the way you should celebrate. I mean I mean you get a record you get a ball. I mean you have all those things you jump cut the moves a good blocking but you know what I like about this guy Alan is as great a player he is and he's a great player. I know we use that term too much. He is equally as good a guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean this guy is something special I and mean, he's, he's, he's a great player but he's also a great guy. He comes off the field Nick Hardwick the center who has been hurt in the last couple of weeks Hardwick is still down on his knee and that would be a, a big loss obviously in the middle of the line with Corey Withrow as his backup. Well he hurt his ankle last week against Cincinnati and I didn't think there was any way that he'd come back in that game. He finished the game missed one day of practice this week. It looks like it was that same ankle that he got rolled up in Cincinnati last week. John you're exactly right about Tomlinson. He has a great sense of where he is and who he is. And you never read or hear anything really untoward about him. Solid solid citizen. You know and that's big. You know, I mean the, you know the not every great player and sometimes we tend to make it not every great player is a great guy. Right. Not every great player is even a good guy. Mm -hmm. So when you get something like this and you get you know a, a great player 
who is also a great guy, then then you're so happy when he when he breaks records, when he does things like Tomlinson is doing this year. The guy he was sitting next to falls into that category too, and McCardell, Nate Kading for the extra point. So that was a big drive for the San Diego Chargers. They were down by 17. Now all of a sudden it's back to 10. 5-10 left in the third. Tonight show this week they work on Keenan McCardell's foot or ankle rewrap that Denver leading 24 14 a little more than five to go in the third Nate Kading a guy they picked up as part of that Manning Rivers transaction in the 04 draft the draft choice turning into Kading touch back here Plummer and the offense to work from the 20 24 14 Broncos only the best come to flex next week. Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts battle the Philadelphia Eagles. Every game counts, but only one night matters. NBC's Sunday Night Football. And from Denver, Sunday Night Football is being brought to you by Wendy's. Get in the middle of flavor, do Wendy's new double melt, and do what tastes right. Broncos up by 10. Start from the 20-yard line on this drive. Fake the end around to Walker after the play fake. And then the pass is deep and tipped away and almost intercepted. That's Antonio Cromarty who was there. Rod Smith going deep downfield. And interestingly, Smith has not caught a pass of more than 19 yards this season, but going deep here. And that was good defense by the Chargers. You know that they didn't go for anything. Rod Smith is the is the inside guy there going deep. Deep, but look, the corner goes deep with him, and the safety coming in right there is also so. So in essence, by the time the ball got there, Rod Smith was double teamed. Rod Smith in his dotage right now at the age of 36. He's been their main man for so long, but right now he's the underneath guy with Javon Walker, the normal deep play threat. Second down and 10. Plummer just has to dump it at the line of scrimmage. The pressure was on Carlos Polk, who had to come out of the game as he was injured earlier, but is back in and forced the issue here. Third down. Yeah, he was trying to get a screen pass out there to the left. And when you get a, a pressure on the quarterback and then you have the screen guy covered, there's nothing left except to throw it away. But the screen's developing out there to the left. But you can see that the screen is covered. I don't know. Jake didn't try and get it over Olshansky. You know, he could have. Taking a shot and said, "Well, I'm going to try and get that screen pass up over that defensive end." But sometimes, as we know, that defensive end will catch it and run it in for mm -hmm. a touchdown. Jason Taylor does that about every week, yeah. it seems. Ask Rex Grossman. Third down and ten from the twenty. Big draw. Plummer flushed out. Throws tip. And that is incomplete. And speaking of that, how about Derek Robinson right there? The end number 98, fourth down. Yeah, and that's that's what Marty's clapping about now because that's what he wanted to do. You know, is 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 get off the field. I mean, get the defense in there. You know, get off the field. Get the ball back to the offense. You see here, the Cesare starts to come from the outside and give him the pressure from the outside, and then. Jake kind of has to force that thing in there. Yep. You know, more linemen are doing that, re realizing that if you don't get there, if you don't get to the quarterback, just get your hand in his lane. Ernster's punt after a three and out. Eric Parker from the 36. Back to the 43. So 441 remaining in the third quarter. Chargers were down by 17. Now it's 10. And now they'll start from near midfield here in Denver. To the second numbers right there. He wears that dark shield. You have to have a doctor's prescription to wear it. And one of the reasons is he's prone to migraines. He now has 17 TDs in his last six games, counting this one. 20 in his first 10 on his way to breaking Sean Alexander's NFL record of 28. And the fastest, of course, to 100 career TDs, breaking Emmett Smith and Jim Brown's record. They co held it at 93. He did it in 89. And there's plenty of time left in this one. From the 43 yard line that pass is incomplete slant intended for Malcolm Floyd first time they've gone his way tonight it'll be second and ten you know and I think that was a big thing that they stayed with LT I think that 
you know that Mike Shanahan said one of the one of the things we do here in Denver is we seem to get ahead of them and that takes Tomlinson out of the game they did get ahead they got ahead 24 to 7 but the Chargers were smart they didn't let that take with Damian Tomlinson and the run out of the game and I think they have to stay the same way now they got plenty of time they don't have to go to pass every down they have 19 and a half minutes coming off a game in which they scored 42 points in the second half last week. That's a slam and this one is caught by Malcolm Floyd so they run the same play again and this time he makes the catch and we check in with Andrea. Well obviously we saw that Ladanian Tomlinson broke one of Jim Brown's records. I talked to Brown this week and he said he's welcome to all of them. <laughs> and one reason is that he's so impressed with him as a person and a player. Ladanian sought out and met Jim Brown when the Chargers played the Browns a couple of weeks ago. Brown told me that LT is more than a great running back. He's a great football player and actually compared him to Marcus Allen in terms of his all-around ability. And he said a guy like that today is a breath of fresh air. Amen. Third and three. And that pass is caught by Tomlinson. And here goes touchdown number 101. So once again, we talked about Ladanian. Out of the backfield, you know what he can do. You split him out as a receiver, you know what he can do. And he's also thrown five touchdown passes in his career. He scored four last week. He has three tonight. That's 51 yards on a third and three. Right, and that's what Jim Brown was talking about. I mean, Ladanian Tomlinson can do it all. He's not, he's not just a runner. He'll run, he'll block, he'll catch, he'll catch deep, and he'll also throw the ball. And that has completely silenced this crowd in excess of 75,000 at Invesco Field. <laughs> it sure has. I mean, he just came out of the backfield, went right up the seam. It's a pin drop here, caning for the point after. So it was 24 7 not that long ago. Now it's Denver 24, San Diego 21. But he's going to come out of the backfield right here and shotgun and just run right up the seam. So he has the two, two wide receivers outside. One comes inside, Ladanian Tomlinson just goes right up the seam. That was a zone dog there. They had the pressure coming. Rivers sees him. He comes right now. Ekubon was on him. He, he he gets away from Ekubon and runs right past Champ Bailey. Ebenezer Ekubon, the defensive end. That's what a zone dog is. You dog one side and then you drop the defensive end on the other side. Of course, Ebenezer Ekubon on Ladanian Tomlinson is no match at all, is it? He's had his problems in Denver but not tonight mentioned that you, you can split him out he wasn't split out on that play of course in the in the shotgun flanking rivers but you don't know what to do with him there if you're a, the, the defense either you can run him on an inside give you can run him on a curl as he did right there he can stay in the block which he does with such proficiency as well three touchdowns tonight and a three point game. Now Cecil Sapp is back to return the kick. He had a 53 yarder at the outset of the second half which led to a Jason Elam field goal. And he's moving around back there you know trying to trying to not let Elam know where the ball is going to be and hitting not know where he's going to be. And Kading will kick it on a couple of bounces into the end zone and Sapp will down it there so. Denver starting from the 20 after a three and out LT you know and just just watch the things that he does here I mean they where where he takes the ball you know up inside then bounces it outside then inside then runs outside you know, I mean he just he just has you know so many moves but then to go with these moves he has great speed and strength and this one here we saw the runs and now you need a big play shotgun third down run around a seam pass. I mean, he literally, he can do it all. I mean, there's some guys you try and make up for, but Walter Payton was that guy. I mean, Walter Payton could run it, he could block, he could catch it, he could throw it. Already a Charger franchise record. Now you got Bell cutting back for a gain of eight. You know, John, I'm thinking about calling him LT, which I, I, when I first heard it, I said, no, no, no. There's only there's only one LT, and that's Lawrence Taylor. It, it was tantamount when I heard it. The saying, you know, a guy comes into the NBA and you're going to start to call him MJ. Yeah. No, you're not going to do that. But you know what? He's become LT in his own right. I think I, th I think he can be anything he want. I mean, there's a lot of letters in Ladanian Tomlinson. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think some people do it just for that, so they don't have to go through all the letters. Good point. If it was Larry Thomas, he'd be Larry Thomas. You're right. This is Bell. 
for a gain of about five and that's a first down up to the 33 yard line. And I think the Broncos are in the in the same position. You can't get away from what you're doing. I mean just because you know the Chargers came back they're not they're not that far back. I mean you just keep doing what you're doing who you are. But I think there is some place here where where Jake Plummer hasn't run a lot. He hasn't bootlegged a lot. And I think I think now you know the rest of the third quarter and the fourth quarter is if the bootleg is going to be there it'll be there now. Two and a half remaining in the third quarter. Toss back to Mike Bell and the undrafted rookie from Arizona up to the 40 yard line gain of seven. Marlon McCree makes the tackle. You know we always talk about this offensive line and how they can get to the second level. Watch watch the left guard here Ben Hamilton how he'll do it. First of all you come out there on the tackle and you just give him a push then get to that second level get to that linebacker and that's the difference between a two or three yard gain and a seven or eight yard gain. Second down call to two now from the forty one yard line. They give it to Nash and that's a great tackle at the line of scrimmage coming in was Randall Godfrey the inside linebacker. And now here's the here's the Bronco offensive line and we'll just look at you know we've been talking about the zone blocking and about the the linemen getting to the second level. This is all the linemen getting up to the second level getting those linebackers and defensive backs. And there's no one that does it better than this Bronco middle of the offensive line. The tackles are playing pretty well tonight too. Mm -hmm. Yeah two guys who weren't starting at the beginning of the year on third down and two you have a flag here. Clearly movement along the defensive front Nash was there did Godfrey come across. I was at practice the other day and I was looking at that that rookie left tackle undrafted offside defense ninety five five yard penalty first down. Sean Phillips. No, I was looking at 64 there Eric Pierce and 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 here's a guy who's six foot five 306 pounds and is really a good player and you think how can he not be drafted I mean how can you lose a guy six foot five and 305 pounds I mean he can play I mean he was a he was a great high school wrestler and I've always liked that combination an offensive lineman that at some point in either high school or college was a wrestler and he played his college football right up the interstate in Fort Collins of Colorado State. Randall Godfrey makes the tackle on Nash as we're down to the final minute of the third quarter in a battle for first place in the AFC West. I think one thing that you know Mike Shanahan knows because we talked earlier about what a good play caller was in fact he's calling plays now without the glass <laughs> I noticed I mean, he, he's calling right off the top of his head but but he knows that the 24 21 is not enough that, that he's going to he's going to have to score more points you just can't you just can't fold the tent here with just one quarter left to go fake to Bell then the pass to Bell and staying right with him with the coverage is Donnie Edwards. Donnie Edwards in his 11th year now played his college ball at UCLA stellar early part of his career in Kansas City and that's going to take us down to the end of the third quarter. LT what a night. End of the third quarter at Invesco Field with the score the Denver Broncos 24 the San Diego Chargers 21 Sunday Night Football continues after these messages from your local NBC station. Now these are digital photos that are coming right out of the printer and what they do is they have a guy up there who takes two pictures one at the snap and one right after the snap then they then they put in the notebook take it out to the sideline and give it to coach Mike Shanahan then he's looking at it so he's looking now to see what the Chargers were doing on defense so he can go first down second down third down he can go back all the way if he wants to see goal line or short yard and here's the call on third and five and then they only get four so Mike Bell takes it to the forty six on the first play of the fourth quarter Denver yeah. the site Al Michaels John Madden Andrea Kramer and Mike Shanahan now with a decision on a fourth and one at the forty five yard line right and this is a, a big decision for Mike Shanahan and we've always talked about him being an aggressive play caller and again knowing that three points against his charger offense now is not enough but also knowing against that potent San Diego offense you don't want to give him a short field 
I think this is a quarterback sneak, but you better get Jamal Williams blocked. Fourth and one. They're going to toss it to the outside to Bell. And Bell's going to be able to get enough of a block before he gets taken down by Polk to pick up the first down. Rod Smith on the outside, and Mike Bell knew exactly what he needed and just did get there. Right, and that was a perfect call by Mike Shanahan because I was talking about thinking about going inside a quarterback sneak, but the Chargers had everything packed in the middle. So that's the thing to do fake in the middle and then pitch it and get it to the outside. Rod Smith right there. I mean once in a while a wide receiver does have to get you a block when it's fourth down the wide receiver better get you a block. He engaged Drayton Florence and that was just enough. Now to the fullback sap Cecil sap to the 41 yard line. And then it will be second down and nine. Yeah, when we were talking to uh, you know the Bronco coaches the other day, to Mike Shanahan, he was talking about that maybe not running a lot of bootleg early, but in the second half, you know, maybe get to it. And it looks like that time Jake Plummer handed off to the left, and he he faked a bootleg out to the right. And again, I think that we're going to see some bootleg from now on. Damian Nash is the running back. David Nash and Mike Bell in and out. Second down and eight. Plummer to the outside and that catch is made because Jammer wasn't looking Walker makes the catch Quinn Jammer with his back to the play and Javon Walker is able to haul it in and move it inside the 20 yard line of the 18. Yeah you got to give a lot of credit to Jake Plummer on that one this this is a heck of a throw I mean there is a guy that is covered now I know he's your go to guy and you want to get him the ball Jammer's not looking and Javon Walker just gets a step beyond him and Jake Plummer puts the ball right there. That was a gutsy throw by Jake Plummer. Tremendous concentration as well by Javon Walker his third catch. And now Marty Schottenheimer may want to challenge this either for possession or being out of bounds. San Diego is challenging the ruling on the field that the receiver stepped out of bounds. We'll reveal the spot. So Corolla will take a look at it. And we will when we come back. Hey. So let's take a look at this as during the break after Schadenheimer challenges the call. It's clear he doesn't step out beforehand. He's juggling but he appears to establish the right foot the left foot and then the right foot again. The defensive back gets his hand in there Drayton or uh, Jammer but he appears to be inbounds with possession so I would say the chances of this being overturned are very minimal. The there's an oddity here the referee Bill Carollo overturns fewer challenges than any referee in the league. After reviewing the play it's been determined the receiver caught the ball inbounds of both feet. And the out of bounds spot is the correct spot. San Diego is charged with a timeout. So Carollo has been under the hood nine times hasn't overturned anything. We of course leave no stone overturned. Have every fact and figure for you. But he's right that time. Right. There was and nothing he, overturned. He was right. I mean you because the questionable foot would be his right foot and I don't think his right foot ever did go out of bounds. Marty's still talking about that one. That was a big play for the Broncos and that was you know, as you say it was a heck of a catch by Javon Walker but but that was some throw by Jake Plummer. And there is John Elway who retired after winning a second consecutive Super Bowl back in 1998. John Elway would have made that throw in the same throw and he would have thrown it so hard he would have he would have knocked Javon Walker <laughs> out of bounds. You talk about a rifle arm or a gun that was John Elway. Damian Nash is the running back first down at the 18 yard line. Plummer to the end zone and for Walker and that's incomplete jammer is with him again and it will be second down and 10 this is a, a big series here for the San Diego defense to try to keep it as a one possession game and for Denver to try to stretch it to 10 and not six and you see Quentin jammer and how far off he is and he better turn and look for that ball 
I mean that's that's the thing that's very very close to interference. And that's one problem that Quentin Jammer has is getting interference penalties. Second down and ten. Quarterback draw. Nothing. 16 yard line. Jacques Césaire is there for the tackle. So another big third down play for the Broncos here. It'll be third down and seven at the 15 yard line. Yeah, the Chargers played that very well. What the Broncos did is they went empty backfield, thinking that they would spread the defense out, leave no one in the middle, and then Jake Plummer could run that quarterback draw. Now I think he has to throw the ball. I mean, I mean, now he has to drop back and he has to throw, you know, an eight or nine yard pass. I'm not saying he has to throw it to the end zone, but obviously he has to throw that 10 yard completion to get that first down. Big play here. Shanahan's going to take a timeout. Timeout. A big third and seven when we come back. Third and seven, 15 yard line. John, what are you thinking here? Well, you know what I would I would think is maybe put Javon Walker out there again on Quentin Jammer. Remember how Quentin Jammer was off him? And then instead of throwing a fade or a deep route, just throw a comeback. They're not going to do it because Javon Walker is on this side. Right, and Drayton Florence is on him. You got Rod Smith to the right side. Plummer out of the shotgun. Drops the ball, picks it up, and they'll tackle him back at the 22, so you don't know what they had in mind here. But now you know that Jason Elam will come in to attempt about a 39 yard field goal. I'll tell you of all the times to drop it. Remember earlier when we had a Denver Bronco game and and, and Mike Shanahan was saying and he told Jake Plummer that the way a quarterback makes his money in the NFL is on third down. And, you know and that's what you expect. I mean, you're going to have first down plays that are good or bad second down plays that are good or bad. You have to make the third down play and that was a big one for the Broncos right there. Plummer holds for Elam. This is 38 yards. He's one for one from 42. He's now two for two. So San Diego is able to stiffen. Hold him to three. Still a one possession game. Denver up by six with 11 13 to play. On it, throw it and, and block for you when he needs to. You know, he probably is as close to reminding me as anyone uh, that I've seen in this league to Barry Sanders. Talking about number 21, another phenomenal night for him. Just keeps putting new marks in the record book. San Diego will get the ball. Michael Turner running back the kick from the one. Gets by. Perkis and then is out of bounds up near the 45 uh, yard line. Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Nissan, inviting you to shift the way you move through the world by Sprint. Be a better fan with NFL Mobile only from Sprint. Power up by Best Buy. Wrap up the wow this holiday season only at Best Buy and by yellowbook.com. Quick, local, reliable. Search online at yellowbook.com. Downtown. Denver glowing in the distance. LT. At least three touchdowns in four consecutive games. That has never been done before. Inside handoff. Tomlinson over the 50. Another first down. He's over a thousand yards for the season with that rush. As he and Tiki Barber and Frank Gore and Larry Johnson are all in a hot battle for the rushing title. Fifth player in the history of the league. To begin his career with six straight thousand yard rushing seasons. The other thing that he just did on that last run, Al, you don't see a lot of running backs do. He makes moves with his feet, you know, which we know, but he also makes moves with the ball. Yeah. You don't see that a lot in this game. Michael Turner comes in. He of the gaudy six and a half yard per carry average. Rivers sets up, fires, caught 25 yard line. And that's Antonio Gates. They find the big tight end at the 24 and another San Diego first down. You know, and you wonder, why haven't you been doing that all game? I mean, it seems like there's something you can do, but watch here, Philip Rivers, how he stands tall. I mean, he stands tall and he bounces. He doesn't gain ground going in that pocket, just bounces and waits and waits and waits. And why can he wait? Because he has excellent pass protection. But I like the way he stands tall in the pocket. Tomlinson back in out of the shotgun from the 24 swing it to the outside that's caught by Antonio Gates 
Hey, a couple of guys that must love this. Dan Fouts and John Hadle, probably the two greatest quarterbacks in the history of the Charger franchise. And don't forget their original quarterback was Jack Kemp. Right, and, and you always kind of associate with with those guys and the passing and the you know Air Coriel and the pass offense and Fouts and of course Hadle with Sid Gilman and and they're coming back to those days for the Chargers. <laughs> and then when they wear those powder blue uniforms, oh. man, that is it. Air Marty, second and four from the 18. Tomlinson tries to spin around, nothing happening. Stopped at the 17, 8.45 to go. And upcoming a third and three for the Chargers. Now they ought to just, just take a game and just make all the different moves that LaDainian Tomlinson makes in a game. I mean, there's, there's a new one right there, a spinner. And we know, you know, about his straight arm. We know about his jump cuts. And, and that one, we caught him on a spinner. But this is a big third down now. Crowd stopping. They built in some gives just like the old stadium. That's why the camera shakes. Third and three. I think they can still get the ball to Gates. Rivers. Yep. First down, first and goal. Lynch makes the tackle. So they did not go to Gates at all for almost half the game. Now they've gone to him five times. He's their leading receiver. You know, and, and that's probably one of the things that they talked about at halftime, too. And in fact, I think Marty told Andrea that, that, you know, we have to get the ball to Antonio Gates. And you just know that. So then you put in ways, you put in different things. And, you know, you look and see how they're playing their nickel. They're playing Foxworth on, on Antonio Gates and nickel. And you see how you can work on him in first and second down situations and in nickel situations. First and goal. Tomlinson. To the outside, then back in, takes it to the five, gets about three yards. He has 83 rushing yards tonight and 74 receiving yards tonight. You know, he was telling me, you know, a couple of months ago about a game that he used to play as a kid, and I can just see that last one. I'm thinking about it. Used to be you get like five or six guys and you throw the ball up in the air, and the guy that catches it runs and everyone has to tackle him. He said that was his favorite game, and that's where he learned those moves. You know, the you catch the ball, five or six guys, running, and they could never tackle him. Second and goal. Trips left. Rivers to the left. Rivers throws to the back of the end zone, and it is caught for the touchdown. Vincent Jackson at 6'5 and 241, and that's the kind of play you run with a 6'5 guy against a 5'8 defensive back, Darren Williams. Yeah, again, a perfect throw by Phillip Rivers, and when you get that 6'5 guy, what you can do is just throw it to the back pylon. He's the outside receiver here, and he's just going to run to that pylon. You just throw it right back to that end pylon where either he's going to get it for a touchdown or it's going to be an incomplete pass. Real close. He looks as if he has... Possession there, he gets both feet down. Then this contact from Williams, the side judge is looking right at it, and it's a touchdown. And upstairs, the Bronco defensive assistants are looking at it, and they tell Shanahan, don't even challenge. Save the timeout. The extra point by Kading is good. And San Diego erasing two 21 point deficits last week. They've erased a 17 point deficit tonight. Chargers by one. What a game. NFL.com, you can log on and vote. Your favorite players for the Pro Bowl. I think LaDainian Tomlinson may just be getting a couple of votes tonight. I think he's going to get a ton of them. But he's the guy that has to be in anyway. I mean, he's, you know, he's the first guy in. Meanwhile, Rivers, a little shaky in the first half, the interception. And had trouble finding his rhythm. All of a sudden, Phillip now 222 yards. And again, you know, you talk about it for lack of a better description and how a young quarterback has it. He's one of the it guys. Right. And I think the last week was a big thing that comeback. You know, once you have that, then you know you can do it and you can feel the Chargers feeding off that tonight. Cecil Sapp downs it in the end zone. Plummer is no stranger to fourth quarter comebacks. He's had a lot. He'll need another one. 28-27.
No team in the history of this league has won consecutive games coming from 17 or more points behind in each game. Look at that, 12,328 games since 1920. Up to the minute, the Chargers are trying to do it. First down from the 20-yard line. And a lot depends on their defense now. Mike Bell up to the 25. San Diego's defensive coordinator is Wade Phillips with a lot of ties here. It was Wade Phillips who coached the Broncos. He was the head coach here for two years, 93 and 94. He was fired, and in came Shanahan. Wade Phillips, of course, his dad was Bum Phillips, and Wade is one of the, the top defensive coordinators in football. I mean, he's a real smart guy, and his and his defense is always always play smart. Second and five. This is Bell plugging forward. It's going to be third down and a yard, maybe a yard and a half when they unpile. You know, it's still tough to run in there on Jamal Williams. You got to kind of find something else that maybe you could do because, you know, they'll start to double team and he just stands up the double team. And you have to get a push off your double team. And when you when you don't get a push on your double team, then it's tougher to get to that second level, and there's not much running in there. Third down, they'll spot it at the 28. So third down and two. And every third down conversion from here on out. Very big. On the ground. Bell gets it. Moves the chains. And we'll go inside five minutes before the next play. Kyle Johnson, the fullback. Leading the way with a block. You know, Mike Shanahan came in here with a plan that, that he wasn't going to run Jake Plummer much. It wasn't going to be a lot of play action. It wasn't going to be a lot of bootleg. It was going to be a lot of run, 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 and then drop back pass. And, you know, he's been sticking with the run. And I think that's something you do. You look at, you know, four minutes, 55 seconds. You, you still have plenty of time. So you don't have to rush anything. You don't have to press anything. You just stay with your game plan. Damian Nash now in. A tailback from the 32 yard line. Fake the sap, and then Nash gets pounded down by Marcus Harris, the second year outside linebacker, number 92. Read it perfectly, stayed with his man, and turns it into a seven yard loss. Like you say, he played that perfectly, and again, He's probably standing out there waiting for the bootleg. So so in standing out there and waiting for the bootleg when the ball goes away he's also going to get that one because that was the same thing where you where you fake to one side and then give it to the back going the other side. That would be the same effect as defending against a bootleg. Loss of six officially second and 16 from the 26 yard line. Screen. Nash. Nice move. Up to the 37 yard line. Spun inside Drayton Florence to make it third and manageable that time. Third down and four right. after a 12 yard game. And that was a perfect call against that defense. You're going to see a blitz coming from that side, from the left side of the Broncos offense. It's going to be coming from this side, and they throw the screen to the side of the blitz. So he just invites those pressure guys. Gets a screen out there and then it gets a big chunky yardage. Like you say, then that puts him in third and manageable, and now he has to manage it. Third and a big manageable four. Big play here at the 38 yard line. From the 38, Plummer retreats to the outside. He goes, and Marshall is there. Can he one hand it? No. Quentin Jammer with the coverage on the play. So they go to Marshall, who had a big play earlier, the rookie out of Central Florida, and he can't handle it. You know, and you'd think in that situation that they'd be going to Javon Walker. Mm. This isn't a bad thing, though, because Marshall is open. You know, but, you know, again, that's what good hands are. You know, is as you get the one hand out there, you got to get the other one out, too. And now Shanahan. The, two, the choice is here, obviously. Do you go for it or do you punt? You have two timeouts plus the two minute warning, and Mike's going to take one of those timeouts here. So, what do you do if you're Mike Shanahan right now? You know, on the other side, you give the ball back to San Diego. You know, you've got Tomlinson. And the other thing going on here, too, John, I mean, San Diego is getting over a lot of humps. They got to the playoffs in 04, could have gotten there last year, had a ton of injuries. They found Rivers. Tomlinson is in full flower right now. 
can they win a close game they've lost their last seven games decided by three or fewer points yeah and I think I think in this situation though the Broncos have to punt because they have plenty of time I mean you, you know if you really believe that you have the best defense in football then you have to let them play in that situation now I think if you go for it now and if you don't get it then you're putting your defense in a tough position if you punt you're trusting your defense if you don't punt I don't think you trust your defense if you are going to punt you should have punted before the timeout because that would have left you two plus the two minute warning now you've got one plus the two minute warning and when Mike took the timeout it was obviously in his mind to think about the exact right play and to go for it so they will go for it on fourth and four. Yeah, and then, then if you knew you were going to go for it on fourth down, I would have probably chosen a different third down play. I think, mm -hmm. I think that play was to get a big chunk of yardage, and if you didn't get it, you would probably punt. If I knew I was going to go for it on fourth down, I would have, I would have had a shorter type play. Fourth and four. Can they get to the 42 and a half, or will they just try to draw them offside? No, they're going to run the play. And the pass is intercepted at the 45 by Drayton Florence. And Florence is out of bounds. So Drayton Florence picks it off and runs it back inside the 25 yard line. That is actually not much worse than had they given up on downs. But right now, San Diego in field goal range, trying to make it at least a four point game. Yeah, he was trying to get the ball to Rod Smith and. Dayton Florence was out there. He was just playing zone, but the thing that he did well in that zone, he got a good bump on Rod Smith, and then he threw Rod Smith's route out, and then he just backed up a little, and Jake Plummer threw it right to him. So at the 23 now, you have 3:03 left in regulation. The Broncos have one timeout and the two-minute warning. And of course, the big man right now is number 21 out of the backfield, and he can eat the clock and eat the yardage and he starts by getting to the 18 yard line and Denver will use its time out here so that's it San Diego will run another play and then they'll in all likelihood have to run one more play before the clock stops at the two minute warning and Schottenheimer and Cameron going over that part of the strategy right now. Cam Cameron was telling us last night that Marty Schottenheimer will say things to him, but Marty also says to Cam Cameron, you don't have to listen to me. He said, if I say something and you don't want to listen, don't listen because you're the play caller. I, I, I think you have to do that as a head coach. Standings, the winner goes to eight and two, loser to seven and three with KC at six and four. And John, you know it's a big situation when Marty puts the headset on, right? Yeah, right. Because <laughs> he wants to hear, and not only hear, he wants input. But like Cameron said he doesn't he doesn't have to listen and I don't know if he listened to Marty then or not because he's been calling a good game I'm Cam Cameron the offensive coordinator tonight I think is called called in an excellent game especially in the second half I mean getting down you know and staying steady and staying with your plan second down and five from the 18 yard line Tomlinson and they're going to not wrap him up. He's going to get the first down. And finally, he is out of bounds at the five-yard line. And that will stop the clock with 245. And that gives Denver its only chance, really, to stay in the game because the clock stops here. And it will stop once more at the two-minute warning. Watch Tomlinson here, how, how he jump cuts there. Then as he gets down, he just gets down low. The big thing is he never stops his feet. His feet are always going. But you see, he makes that jump cut there. Then he gets down low. He makes himself small. Then, but his feet are going all the time. He's moving forward, moving sideways, and then moving forward again. Came close to getting pants. It behooves San Diego here to run a play that takes at least five seconds so they can get inside 240 and let the clock run down to the two-minute warning. Otherwise, they'd have to run another play before the two-minute warning. They need a five-second play here. And Tomlinson might make it moot. He takes the ball inside the one. So the play clock right now is 37. So the play clock is one second beyond the game clock. So San Diego can now take it to the two minute warning and that'll be the last stoppage of the clock. Right, I was just going to say as they as they take it down there which they did take it down there. They almost got a touchdown out of yep. it. Yep. 
But they took the, that play took six seconds before it was reset. So once they got to 239, they didn't have to run another play. Of course, it's all going to be moved if he gets into the end zone anyway. But then again, well, I don't want to say that because you know you, you you score, you kick the extra point. It's still a one possession game, and Denver's going to get the ball. Ain't over. Tain over McGee. 28-27. Great game. Ladinian Tomlinson, fastest to 100 in history. Pass is caught, and here goes touchdown number 101. He is something special. What's up? Coming up, rock star of the game highlights and interviews. Look back at this one right now with two minutes to go. Even if San Diego scores and with a conversion, it's a one possession game. If you're Denver, you're between a rock and a hard place right now. I mean, in a way, you might as well just let them get into the end zone. You have no timeouts. Take all the time you can when you get the ball back. Otherwise, I mean, if San Diego, let's say, ran a, a couple of kneel downs, that's going to leave Denver with no time. Yeah, San Diego would better to run kneel down than, than to score because I agree with you. I mean, I hate to say it. I hate to agree with it. But but Denver should let San Diego score here. And here's Rivers. That's kind of that's half a kneel down. Yeah, I don't he's, think he wanted to no, score. He's like creeping. He's creeping in. So they, they can't run the clock out. It's third down. The one thing you do want to do is get into the end zone. And you know you don't want to you don't want to have to kick a field goal. And then let Denver score a miracle touchdown and win the game. You at least want to get the touchdown to make it an eight point game. Right. So then you have to go for the touchdown on this down on third down. I think you do. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, that was that was that was a very funny move, though. Now, I agreed with that one, but you have to go for touchdown. Tomlinson. Here. In he goes. And that is four for Ladanian Tomlinson. Four last week, four this week. He may obliterate. The record by the end of the season. Couldn't a lot of players in this league learn how to celebrate from Ladanian Tomlinson? I mean, I mean, this this is a real pro. I mean, you go in there and you and you break all kinds of records. You obliterate everything. You're as good as there is in this game, and you act like you've done it before. You're doing it tonight, and you're going to do it again. He tied a record first set by Jim Taylor in '62, tied by Marshall Falk. In 2000, two consecutive games with four touchdowns in each flag down here. I go back to that fourth down play, Al, when, when Denver went for it. I don't think Mike Shanahan trusted his defense, either that or he respects the heck out of the San Diego offense. You've got a personal foul against Denver, which means the kickoff will come from the 45 yard line which usually Personal also foul, means frustration roughness number 52 it's a 15 yard penalty the point is good we'll enforce it on the kickoff another flag yeah that flag was on Ian gold no then no, just throw another one well the chances are they were going to get a touchback anyway now it's going to be a definite touchback <laughs> <laughs> they could be kicking off from inside Denver territory. Well, they were talking about the penalty on Ian Gold. Then the other official threw another flag. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 27, against an official. It's a 15 yard penalty. The ball will be placed 30 yards from the kickoff. The ball will be placed at the 40 yard line. That was Darren Williams, who at one point looked like he would be one of the heroes tonight with that interception run back. No, those are those are two frustration penalties. And they come here and then you know things start going. San Diego started has in a way, you know, they go again. See, there's Darren Williams. There's gonna be the one on him. You can't do that. And, yeah. and Ferguson should be out of there too. I mean, both of them ought to get away. Meanwhile, here is Ladanian Tomlinson, who has visited the end zone on occasion. 
little toss to the umpire. Yeah, you know, I just got the feeling that you know he was kind of tired of hearing that that you know he's never played well here in Denver and played here five times and the Chargers never won a game and you just feel you know I mean, sometimes you see a player you talk to a player and you just feel that he has a feeling you know I've had enough of that stuff. Yep. 22 touchdowns. San Diego scored a TD on each of their last four possessions. 42 points in the second half last week. 28 tonight. Tomlinson, I mean, the season is 10 games old. That's 22 touchdowns. He's only six behind Alexander. He would only need a touchdown a game to tie Alexander's touchdown mark. You know, and the offensive line has a has a big big part of that too. And I know when we were talking to Cam Cameron about that, he said, you know, early. He said when I had Philip Rivers and we were you know trying to manage him and have him manage again keep the wraps on him. He said a lot of people forgot that I also had a rookie left tackle in Marcus McNeil. And that's that's the toughest offensive line position to play. He said so I had to find out about this guy. We had to do we, do we have to help him in pass protection. Do we have to do anything. And then we, we found out we don't have to help this guy. So this guy in fact he said this is the best left tackle that you had since he's been there. Watch him here. I mean, this is this is the way he plays. I mean, he's a big guy. He's six foot eight. He's strong. He's 330 pounds, and he is a tough guy. Mm -hmm. He has two broken hands. Well, that's how tough he is. <laughs> that's tough. Yeah, and and you know, in football today and in pass protection, I mean, using your hands and getting your hands on a guy is such a big thing. To have one broken hand is tough. To have two of them. You know, it's almost impossible because you just have to just say the heck with it. I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm not even going to think about it. The pain won't bother me. Talking about that now, the Chargers are thinking what kind of kickoff they should do here. Yep. Because they're kicking off from the 40 here. They were they lined up once and then Marty called them over to the sideline. They went over and talked about it and then they're just coming out again. And you know one thing, he's not just going to go bombs away here. It has to be. Not a bad, not a bad place to onside kick. Well, the worst thing that happens if a uh, touchback, obviously, you start at the 20, but maybe San Diego wants to give Plummer a few more yards to have to work with. So they'll either have to go 80 or longer. The downside, of course, is that, you know, you get a good run back yeah. on the other side. It's still a one possession game. And that kick will be fielded in the end zone and then brought out. And of all the things you don't want to do, that's it. That's Cecil Sapp. That's the last thing you want to do. You let it bounce, and it's going to go into the end zone, and you have it at the 20. Right, and I don't, I don't know exactly what kind of kick that was because I thought, you know, he's either going to kick it in and, and, and let him bring it out to the 20, or he's going to line drive it, but he kind of he kind of blooped it up there. And you know what, John? The fact that Sapp probably didn't know what kind of a kick it was made him go out and get it. Yeah, because it looked like half a kickoff and half a punt. It was like Rivers... Initial sneak into the end zone. <laughs> half kneel down, half, half sneak. Prayer. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. From the two, they have to go 98 and get a two point conversion. And that's incomplete. And one other thing, and you got another flag here. But anyway, getting back to that Charger offense, and we know Phillip Rivers is a big part Illegal of it. Illegal touching of a pass, number 50, offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Ben Hamilton. No, and new guys, but but Marcus McNeil is also a big part yeah. of that. You know, John, one thing we haven't even touched on tonight because the game has been so compelling. Point number 50. And back and forth. Second down. Is just to go back for a second with San Diego. They get Rivers. Remember, Manning's not going to go there. They affect the trade with the Giants. They wind up getting Phillip. He's the number four overall pick in the draft. He sits on the bench for two years because Drew Brees emerges as a star. Plummer to throw again to the outside, and then is caught for a short game by Alexander. And nobody expected Brees to be what he was over the last two years. Then you have a case where do you pay Brees about $10 million to stay, or do you let this guy go at it? And Marty Schottenheimer and A.J. Smith, the general manager, were not on the same page here. Marty wanted them to keep Rees. Smith wanted them to go with Rivers. And right now, A.J. Smith appears to have made a hell of a decision here because Rivers has done the job. 
They get Sean Merriman as part of that trade as well. They get Nate Kading as part of that trade as well. As Plummer throws over the middle and that passes a little low. So it's funny the way you know you take a big gamble. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. No, this one worked and it worked because of Philip Rivers. And interestingly, uh, the Denver Broncos are going to have that same decision because you know they have Jake Plummer and then they have Jake Cutler. And and Jake Cutler is going to be the starting quarterback of this Denver Bronco team. It's just when is it going to be this year? Is it going to be next year? Is it going to be two years from now? I would I would say it's not going to be two years from now. And I don't think it'll be this year either because no, I mean they're still no. in the race. So it's probably in the middle there because Jay Cutler is a lot like Philip Rivers. Game is over if they don't convert. But they do convert and it's Javon Walker up to the 33. Again they cannot stop the clock. So Plummer's got to get up there and spike the ball. And he'll have under 40 seconds. But they're up at the 34 yard line. They have 66 yards to go. And Jake pounds it into the ground with 34 seconds and now another flag. And I think you're going to have a disqualification here as well. Well, Olshansky is walking off the field, so. And yep. he's not injured. And Marty's yelling at him. Yep. He's out of the game and getting an earful. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 99. 15 yard penalty number 99 is also ejected from the game and that's why Marty is so crazy and who can blame him 15 more yards and you lose your starting defensive end right and here he is there it is right there oh, sure. you see, it was just a left to the head and then a right I think what he was upset about he thought Nalen went for his knees which he did but that's OK I mean you know when a center goes to block you like that you can't punch him. I mean that was a stupid thing for Olshansky to do and I, I think he's hearing about it right now. And now you have 51 yards to go. Denver has it at the 49 so they convert on fourth down. From inside their 10. They convert they get the penalty and now they're 51 yards away. Plummer stepping up throws caught Smith. He's down at the 37. Denver regrouping. That's a first down. 25, 24. And now you have another flag at the end of that play. So the clock momentarily stopped with 24 seconds. Delay a game. Defense, number 29. Five yard penalty. First down. Contending Drayden Florence did not give. The offensive player the opportunity to get up. In other words, he was staying on him too long, not enabling him to get up, and thus he's flagged for that. And the big part of that penalty is stop the clock. So now the Broncos can can call a good play. They have time to regroup, you know, and get that play. And I would think they have to think of something, some way to get the ball to Javon Walker. And now they're at the 32-yard line. They've got Smith in the slot left. They've got Walker wide to the left. And the Chargers are in a prevent defense. You can see they, you know, they have the receivers covered. Plus they have three deep, about 20 yards. So they're not going to let them get the quick, easy strike. Now you got Car the officials are still discussing the situation, enabling Plummer to go over. For consultation and a drink. That was a long time out. Yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out what that, what that was all about because Carolla was still going over things with the officials. There was no official timeout. It's first and five. The ball is at the 32 yard line. Plummer moving to his left, taken down, loses the ball. And in effect, that's going to. Pretty much do it because with 14 seconds left, Denver has it, but it was Sean Phillips who came in. Denver is going to come up with a football. They're going to spot it, but the clock keeps running, and that will do it. There's two footballs on the field. And hold everything here because when the ball didn't go out of bounds, the clock kept running. Carollo and the line judge now get together. That's the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me why, Bill. It is the end of the game. In effect, 
despite the confusion on the field when the ball did not go out of bounds the clock kept running the best thing that would have happened for Denver is had the ball gone out of bounds but it didn't and San Diego this becomes the first team in the history of the National Football League starting in 1920 to win back to back games down by 17 and the first team to win four straight games when allowing 24 or more in a game. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, I tell you what, the Chargers are playing the most exciting football in the National Football League. Week after week. Phillips with the sack and the fumble. Cesare can't handle it. And then the best thing that could have happened is the ball goes out of bounds. Even though Denver recovers, it is inbounds. Clock runs out. Phillips and the Chargers win the game. They're in first. Back we come after this.